Beloved, I trust that you are well and keeping safe. So today we are continuing the studies of the book of Deuteronomy and we are studying Deuteronomy chapter 11. Beloved, in Deuteronomy chapter 11, Moses had brought the Israelites to the border of the promised land. But because he would not be able to cross over the Jordan with them and enter the promised land, he gives them a speech reminding them of the wonderful miracles that the Lord God performed for them in Egypt and in the wilderness ever since they left Egypt 40 years before this time. And he also reminds them never to forget the wonderful things the Lord had done for them so that they would obey the Lord God, worship him and serve him with all their hearts for them to be able to inherit the promised land that God is giving to them permanently. And so, beloved, let's go on and hear the word of the Lord. And in verse 1 of Deuteronomy chapter 11, Moses said, Love the Lord your God and always obey all his laws. Remember today what you have learned about the Lord through your experiences with him. It was you, not your children, who had these experiences. You saw the Lord's greatness, his power, his might, and his miracles. You saw what he did to the king of Egypt and to his entire country. You saw how the Lord completely wiped out the Egyptian army along with their horses and chariots by drawing them in the Red Sea when they were pursuing you. You know what the Lord did for you in the desert before you arrived here. Beloved, at this point, the Israelites had arrived at the border of the promised land, ready to cross the Jordan River and take possession of the land that God promised to give their ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so Moses takes time to remind them of how the Lord has shown himself faithful to them ever since they were in Egypt. And he also reminds them of how the Lord God had performed spectacular, wonderful miracles for them, giving them victory over Pharaoh's army by opening up the Red Sea for them and drowning Pharaoh and his army in the sea and keeping the promise he made to their ancestors to bring them to the border of the promised land. And in verse 6, Moses reminds them of what happened to Dathan and Abiram, whom the earth opened up to swallow them along with their families, their tents, their servants, and their animals. Dathan and Abiram were buried alive together with all their possessions and families because they opposed Moses' leadership, saying they were just as holy as Moses and no longer needed him. Their decision to disobey God by rejecting his chosen leader caused them to suffer the consequence of being swallowed up by the earth alive. And the punishment they received for their disobedience was meant for the people to fear God and obey his word. The fear of God was not meant for the people to stay away from God, but so that they will respect God's power and his authority. Moses knew that the people's obedience to the commandment of God is the key for them to inherit the promised land. So he says to them, Obey everything that I have commanded you today. Then you will be able to cross the river and occupy the land that you are about to enter. 
and you will live a long time in the rich and fertile land that the Lord promised to give your ancestors and their descendants. In short, Moses' message is obey the Lord and possess or inherit the promised land. Israel's submission and obedience to the word of God is what will enable them to permanently receive their inheritance in the promised land. Beloved, receiving what God has promised you will always require your obedience. Obedience is the key to living a victorious life and receiving all the promises that God has made to you. Your victory in this life is dependent upon your obedience to God's word. And your spiritual strength is also dependent upon your obedience to God. If you frequently disobey God's word, you will be weak spiritually and this will cause Satan to bring into your life all sorts of troubles. Beloved, Samson, the most strongest man who ever lived, lost his strength because he disobeyed God's word. His disobedience to God's word made him lose his physical strength as well as his sight. So to be strong both spiritually and physically and prevent Satan from attacking you, beloved, you must continually obey God's word so that the power in God's word will always be present and available to help you in your time of need. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says that the word of God is alive and powerful and is sharper than any two-edged sword. Beloved, the word of God, which is a double-edged sword, will fight all the spiritual and physical battles in your life so that you will be able to possess all the promises that God has for you. So the key to receiving the promises of God is your obedience to God's word. So beloved, moving on, Moses continues his speech and says it in verse 10. The land that you are about to occupy is not like the land of Egypt where you lived before. There, when you planted grain, you had to work hard to irrigate the fields. But the land that you are about to enter is a land of mountains and valleys, a land watered by rain. The Lord your God takes care of this land and watches over it throughout the year. Moses reminded the Israelites before they entered the promised land that in Egypt, they had to do hard work to irrigate their fields before they planted crops. But in the promised land where God is taking them, God promised to ease their hard work by sending in rain in its season. And the only condition is that they faithfully obey God's command and serve him with all their hearts. In verse 13 to 17, Moses reminds them that the only thing that can prevent them from enjoying victory and living long in the promised land is themselves. So in order for them to permanently inherit the land of promise and enjoy victory, Moses said to them in verse 18, Remember these commands and cherish them. Tie them on your arms and wear them on your foreheads as a reminder. Teach them to your children 
talk about them when you are at home and when you are away when you are resting and when you are working write them on the doorpost of your houses and on your gates then you and your children will live a long time in the land that the Lord your God promised to give to your ancestors. You will live there as long as there is a sky above the earth. Beloved, talking about God should be part of our everyday life. God instructed them to memorize his word and to also display them in places where they will see it. Beloved, we all have stories to share, accounts of when God saved us when we were in the world and how God has delivered us from problems and also saved us from challenging trials. We also have accounts of when we fail to trust in God and the consequences that followed. Beloved, our children need to hear all these stories so that they will be encouraged to trust in God and submit their lives fully to Him. Beloved, it is only by letting the word of God invade in every area of your children's life that they are able to live the abundant life that Jesus Christ promised us in John chapter 10, verse 10. Beloved, in today's study, Deuteronomy chapter 11, Moses restates the same word four different times to describe what it means to obey and follow the commandments of God. He said, love the Lord your God and obey his laws and commands always, not sometimes, but always. And one thing that can motivate us to obey the word of the Lord is our love for him. Beloved, Jesus Christ said it in John chapter 14, verse 15, that if you love me, obey my commandments. If you love somebody, you will do everything you can not to disappoint or hurt them. Just as a child's disobedience grieves or hurts their parents, so does our disobedience grieves God. God grieves over our disobedience because our failure to obey his word prevents his good intentions for our lives from coming to pass. Beloved, Jesus Christ came to give us the abundant life and God doesn't want us to ruin his good plans and intentions for us. And so because God loves you so much and wants the best for you, he gives you his commandment not to harass you, but to protect and guide you so that you can receive all the good plans that he has for you. And in the last few remaining verses, Moses says to them, Today I am giving you the choice between a blessing and a curse. A blessing if you obey the commands of the Lord your God that I am giving you today, but a curse if you disobey these commands and turn away to worship other gods that you have never worshipped before. Beloved, the choice to obey is not always so easy. You are called to forgive even when you've been hurt so badly. But beloved, it's important that you forgive those who hurt you so that your own sins will be forgiven. And when it comes to salvation, Jesus' sacrifice on the cross makes salvation available for everyone. 
but you must first repent and obey God's command to believe in Jesus Christ and make him Lord over your life. Otherwise, you will perish by receiving the same judgment that is meant for Satan and his angels. If you are in a dilemma and not sure if you should surrender your life to Jesus, beloved, I encourage you to obey God's command in Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and believe in Jesus Christ as the one that God sent to come and die in your place so that all your sins may be forgiven. When you obey God to believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior and make him Lord over your life, beloved, not only will your sins be forgiven, but you will receive all the promises that God has made in the Bible. Promises to protect you, promises to deliver you from trouble, and promises to supply all your needs according to the riches of God. And you will also have your name written in the book of life for you to escape hell and spend eternal life with God. Beloved, you don't want to miss any of these promises of God and so obey God's word. Receive Jesus Christ into your life so that all these wonderful promises of God will be fulfilled in your life. And so, beloved, this brings us to the end of today's study. I trust that you have been blessed by the word of God. Please join me again next time and let the Holy Spirit, our helper and teacher, continue to reveal the hidden truths of God's word to us. Beloved, until we meet again, may the Lord God bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious unto you. And may the Lord have mercy on you and give you peace. You are blessed.